Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our vascular anatomy series. So I am sure you have seen this video. If you have not, the ascending aorta, the arch of aorta, descending thoracic aorta from T4 to T12 and then the abdominal aorta which begins after the aorta crosses the diaphragm at T12 and at the lower border of L4, it divides into left and right common iliac artery. So till here, we have already discussed in our video on parts of aorta. If you have not seen it, you can have a look again. Today, we are going to focus more on the iliac arteries and their branches. So we already saw that the abdominal aorta is from T12 to L4. And it is slightly to the left of the midline. And that is why when it divides to the two branches, the common iliac arteries, the right common iliac artery logically is longer because it has to cross the midline and then go towards the right. Very commonly asked question. So right common iliac artery is one centimeter longer. It crosses the left as well as the right common iliac vein. So the artery is anterior to these veins and ureter is anterior to it at the division of common iliac artery at the sacroiliac joint. So all these points are very commonly asked questions and this is the area where you identify ureter in your surgeries in the pelvis. This is the area where you can access the common iliac arteries. So this is a very important landmark when it comes to operating on the patients. The left side along with ureter you will also find the superior rectal artery which is nothing but a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery and it is anterior to the left common iliac artery at its division. The major division is to internal and external iliac artery which I am sure most of you know. Other blood supply of this vessel is to psoas major muscle, some peritoneal branches supply to ureter and nerves in that area. Rare variant anatomy, you can have the iliolumbar artery and the accessory renal arteries from the common iliac artery. Now, because the right common iliac artery crosses the left and right common iliac vein anteriorly, sometimes you can have a chronic compression of left common iliac vein by right common iliac artery against the lumbar vertebra. And then this can predispose to a deep vein thrombosis which may be present or absent. And this is a very commonly asked question. It is known as Maytherner syndrome. Commonly seen in young women in second to fourth decades of life. Why is the left common iliac vein involved more commonly? Because it has a transverse course and therefore it is predisposed to compression by the right common iliac artery against the lumbar vertebra. Prolonged immobilization and pregnancy are risk factors. The external iliac artery, as we all know, continues below the inguinal ligament as the femoral artery. And its branches are exactly opposite to each other. So medially, you have the inferior epigastric artery. And exactly opposite the origin of inferior epigastric artery, lateral is the deep circumflex iliac artery. Coming to internal iliac artery, it has two main divisions, the anterior and the posterior division. The branches of posterior division are easy to remember. Iliolumbar artery, lateral sacral artery and superior gluteal artery. If you need a mnemonic, it is PILS or SLIP, whichever way you want to remember. Coming to the anterior division, it has some important branches and the branches in males and females are also different. So anterior division of internal iliac artery is something that you need to remember very carefully, very commonly asked questions in this area in anatomy. First branch is umbilical artery as we have already seen in our videos on hernia. The obliterated part of umbilical artery is what becomes the medial umbilical ligament. Median is the urecus, medial is the obliterated part of umbilical artery. The part of umbilical artery that is patent becomes the superior vesical artery and vas differential artery in males. Other branches are middle rectal artery, okay. Inferior vesical artery is present only in males. Then you have the inferior gluteal and the internal pudendal artery again. Internal pudendal artery is very important and commonly asked question. So we will see it in detail. 
the other important branch is the obturator artery and again we have discussed this in our video on hernia where we have discussed the corona mortis obturator artery and vein have anterior and posterior branches the anterior branch is also known as the pubic branch at the superior pubic ramus and the posterior branch is known as the acetabular branch okay in females the anterior division of internal iliac artery gives rise to the uterine and the vaginal artery so there are multiple mnemonics to remember the anterior division of internal iliac artery and its branches but in very simplified way it is just supplying the pelvic compartments the anterior middle and posterior compartment so you have the urinary bladder and the vas deferens in the anterior in male you have the rectum posteriorly and you have uterus and vagina in females okay in the middle compartment so if you remember your pelvic compartments all the area is supplied by the internal iliac artery and you have inferior gluteal and the internal pudendal artery so now we have already seen this so if you are asked internal pudendal artery is a branch of this flow chart is going to help you anterior division of internal iliac artery which is a branch of common iliac artery going ahead internal pudendal artery has multiple branches which are different in males and females so in males it gives rise to scrotal and penile arteries big males the scrotal equivalent is labia so labial artery and penile equivalent is clitoris and vestibule so the blood supply to bulb dorsal artery and deep artery in both these are supplied by internal pudendal artery so if you remember it logically it's very easy to remember other than that it also supplies to the urethra the perineal artery and the inferior rectal artery so that is also the branch of internal pudendal artery so very commonly asked question please remember this chart or take a screenshot of this chart for rapid revision it's a very commonly asked question in exams and very important to remember if you are operating in this area. So Corona Mortis, we have already discussed in our video on hernia. It is Latin for crown of death. This is a retropubic communication between the external iliac artery, which gives the inferior epigastric artery and the obturator branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery. So accessory obturator artery or branches from obturator and inferior epigastric artery can communicate and lead to a communication which if injured can lead to massive blood loss. That is why it is known as corona mortis. Remember that this can be there in both artery and vein. But now some common questions on these vessels that can be confusing when you are trying to remember them for the first time. We have seen that the inferior epigastric artery is a branch of external iliac artery. Then a very logical question is where is the superior epigastric artery arising from? And superior epigastric artery is the terminal branch of internal thoracic artery. So we have not seen a lot of thoracic arteries in detail in our vascular anatomy series, but we will be seeing them in future. But we are clubbing these here so that it becomes easy for you when you revise. So inferior epigastric artery, superior epigastric artery, which is a branch of internal thoracic artery. And there is something known as superficial epigastric artery, which is the cutaneous branch of common femoral artery. Similarly, deep circumflex iliac artery we saw is a branch of external iliac artery and superficial circumflex iliac artery is a branch of femoral artery. There are also lateral and medial circumflex femoral arteries which are branches of deep femoral artery. So again, the three rectal arteries, superior rectal artery is a continuation of inferior mesenteric artery. Middle rectal artery we have seen is a branch of the anterior division of internal iliac artery. And inferior rectal artery is a branch of internal pudendal artery. Right. So this is how you can club the vessels that are confusing, that need revision, that need to be understood well. And that is why this vascular anatomy series is what we are trying to create. So in upcoming talks, we will also look at the common carotid artery and the subclavian artery. We will look at some thoracic arteries and similarly continue the commonly asked questions. Thank you.